Fifteen years ago, I stepped off a cliff, and I'd like to tell you about that journey. Uh, you see, it wasn't a physical cliff. I was never mortally in danger. Um, I was never physically in harm. But it was an emotional cliff, and it was a very hard one. And the fact that it was an emotional cliff doesn't make it any easier. You see, I was privileged in life to get one of the best college and law school educations that the world has today. I went to some of the top institutions. I was lucky to get a tremendous pedigree. But 15 years ago, I stepped off that track. And what happens when you go to these types of institutions is the well-worn path gets laid out in front of you. You can kind of stay with the path. You can do the things that you're expected to do. There are law firms. There are investment banks. There are consulting firms. There are corporate jobs that are kind of open to you if you want to do them. And so 15 years ago, for me, I left the practice of law. I was a corporate lawyer working at one of the most prominent law firms in America. And I left that, and I joined a little tiny nonprofit organization. And I was doing things before, like multi-billion dollar M&A deals and public offerings. And I stepped off that track. I stepped off the cliff. And it's really hard to do, uh, because what happens is you go through this process. Because in year one, uh, a few weeks later, say, after you step off the cliff, you look around, you feel pretty good about yourself. You're thinking, I did it. I stepped off that. I took control of my destiny. I'm going to make a good life. I'm going to do the things I want to do. And after a few more months, you start to think, OK, it's a little harder than I thought, but I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to keep at this. Right around the end of year one, give or take, everyone's a little different. You start to wonder, I wonder why this is taking so long. This is actually harder than I thought it would be. And then after around year three or so, and everyone's a little different, you start to think, uh-oh, this is really, really hard. And I'm not so sure I know where I'm going anymore. And this kind of goes to this issue of what is leadership in the economy today. Because what happens when you get off that track? And this is not poverty. It's not escaping from war. Look, this is a high class problem. I understand that. But what happens is you start to see your peers do really great things. They start getting appointed to great positions. You start seeing their names in the news. They start doing wonderful things. And it goes to this question of what really is a leader? Because here you are, if you've stepped off the path, you're having to build things one by one, brick by brick, relationship by relationship, idea by idea. And it's really, really hard. And so I look at leadership today as two kinds. There's the anointed leader. There's the leader that goes on the path and gets chosen to fill a position that already exists. And they're chosen because of their wisdom and their expertise and their intelligence and their soundness of character. And that's good. Then there's the other type of leader, what I call the rebel leader. This is the person who's gotten off that path. They've stepped off that cliff, and they're back down there again by choice. And they have to build it all over again from scratch. So right around year five, and everyone's a little different. For me, it was around year five. A spark happens. You spent thousands and thousands of hours doing this stuff. And you find something. And at the time, you can't even really tell. It's like an idea or a passage in a book somewhere, or an article you read, or someone you talked to. And that spark starts to turn into something. And you fan it, and you fan it, and it starts to grow. And that's the way it always happens. But the funny thing is, in the beginning, that spark looks pretty much undifferentiated from all the other sparks that are out there. And as you fan it, that little flame looks pretty ugly. It's not much of a flame at all. And so for me, about 10 years ago, five years after I stepped off that cliff, I found my spark. And I wasn't sure where it would go at the time. But 10 years later, it's turned into this. So this is uh, a product that I started on a journey on 10 years ago. It has the ability to make safe drinking water instantly, anywhere, anytime. There's about 15 years of R&D in there. I met the scientists about 10 years ago. It took 10 years. We're starting to ship product in the next few weeks, our first product. It's a long journey. And what this does is uh, it actually lets you go into a lake or a stream fill it up, and drink it immediately. No electricity, no chemicals, no pumping required. You just drink it. It's called Naked Filter. And I didn't come here just to talk about that. I really came here to talk about that journey. Because that journey of stepping off the cliff and having to build something yourself is extraordinarily hard. And at the time, you wonder along the way, where is this going? And you don't get the glamour. No one cares. Uh, no one really knows where it's going to go. But what's funny now 
is this year, for the first time, everyone thinks we're geniuses. And so for the first eight to nine years, no one cared. And it's quiet, and it's unglorified stuff. And so that is the process of the rebel leader. You don't get the credit, and you're going off the well-worn path. So for those of you that are looking at stepping off a cliff, or have already done so, or have loved ones that have done it, I don't have any profound revelation for you. I don't have any call to action that's going to transform your life. I just, I just have a simple message for you, which is hang in there. It's really hard. I know. And don't get that worried. You will get worried. I know you're going to get worried, but not that worried. Because along the path, you learn a lot. You see a lot. And the journey you make as you step off that cliff, and you start at the bottom, and you climb back up step by step, is an extraordinary journey. You meet people, and you see things, and you learn things that people that never got off that cliff never ever see. So I can't guarantee that you're going to end up where you think you're going to end up. In fact, you probably won't. I can't guarantee that you'll succeed in any kind of normal definition of the term. But I can say that you're going to end up in a better place in the end. So for those of you that have stepped off the cliff or are thinking of doing it, hang in there. Don't worry that much. Keep it up, and good luck. Thank you.